Hello happy people, this is Gavin from Gavin's Biltong. Today we're going to be making biltong. Um, basically we've got a nice big chunk of, of silver side here and we're going to cut it up into steaks. But before that we've got to cut, strip it down, get all the the sinews and everything off, all the, the, the big uh, silver, silver side strap on the side which is all sinew. We've got to get it all cleaned up and then we will cut it into steaks. Once that's done we will spice it up add a little bit of vinegar to it just just has a just change changes the flavor a little bit and then it goes into a tub to to marinate overnight and then tomorrow we would hang it up in in our dryer i'm also going to be making stockies later so that'll be on a different video so let's get get on and start our built on right so there's my meat let's take off the silver skin first so we put a get our knife and we, we slipped up there it's got a, a big bit of gristle this whole side here so we take that first piece off like that just a bit there and we just get underneath it here take it off like that that goes into a bucket which we use reuse we'd be take we cut all the sinews off and we reuse that into the, the burrowas when we make it uh, right so then now that we've got a bit more on the sides here so we take all this all these sinews off as much as we can these little ones aren't a big big problem at all really Take some more off the top there. Right now, on this side, trim that piece off there. There's normally quite a bit on there, so we we just take it off like that. You will notice I'm not using gloves. You can't cut meat and, and wear gloves at the same time. It's just one of those things you can't do. We keep keep washing hands and that's about all, all we can do. There's also quite a big slither in here of sinew. There we are, we exposed that there. So we take as much out as we can. Some of it we can't take out because it's built right into the meat there. So that's looking good there. Now there's a bit of a hard skinny skinny sort of thing on this side some of it's fat which is good uh, there's a little piece of bone in there always got to check for that right that looks okay now what we will do is take the slither off this whole unit and that's what we use for the for the stockies and chili bites so we sort of come down give it about two inches down two and a half inches down about halfway through the meat straight through and we've got a nice chunk there that that chunk here now is what we will come and cut into into stockies and that later so that's going to go into a into a tub for stockies that video i'll be doing shortly uh, all these bits and pieces they can go away into another tub right so now we're ready to cut our bottom we, we lay it out we've got quite a long sinew in there so what we'll do when we get there we'll try and take as much of that out as we can So we start this side and we just come down and put it in. We go about 20 millimeters thick, 
16 to 20 mil thick somewhere around there and we just keep slicing as we go like that right so now you can see that line there where there's that long bit of sinew there what we do we'll cut along the sinew you can't always get it all out but we've got to try and get get most of it out so that there now is a little bit thick so i would just put a cut in there Cut it open a bit there and open it out so now that just makes a longer piece of bolt on. And then where the sinew is, I'll cut this side of it. And that goes in for using elsewhere. And then I carry on making the bolt on. You do get shorter and shorter. On this on here I get the silver sides without the the salmon cut which is a round long piece of um, muscle or, or of meat and it's got a very long grain and I find that it gets gets quite quite tough so I get my silver sides without that on if you get it with it on you can use it no problem at all and um, it just I think it makes it a little bit tough but it, 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 it all works now that we're getting a bit shorter i cut through turn it don't go right through 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 the meat and then cut this side so we get a a longish piece and same over here and this is probably going to be another piece you know so that's a nice long piece now once it's all all sliced up it's ready and it's sliced up you're not going to make, make, no, notice that the difference with that at all so that's now cut cut all our meat ready we next need to get the spices mix the spices mix all the spices in the meat and then uh, overnight in the fridge to marinate and then we hang it up the next day so now we need to put the spices on the meat what we do first we, we do it we add a little bit of vinegar we've got about 20 ml of vinegar per kilo of meat we've got eight kilos of meat here so we put a little bit in the bottom we then basically I use a coke bottle with a tiny little hole in the top it works brilliantly you don't you never want to drown your meat in the vinegar or soak it or anything because it's it just doesn't do anything and it lacks pickles it so put a layer in put a put a spray on it's all it needs no more than that put some more another layer little spray and so on right so once you finish spraying spraying it all on even with a little bit left just add a bit more it's not a big problem but that's all, all it needs firstly you can mix it around by hand mix it all by hand put the lid on give it a good shake around for a few minutes and that is now ready to start spicing now we put it back into another tub and we're ready to mix the spice and then spice it up we're making what's called the namibian spice mix it stemmed from namibia some some years ago and everybody seems to like it as a fail safe method it's basically salt black pepper some sugar and ground coriander roasted ground coriander i basically get get my coriander seed I roast it well I, I fry it up and then I put it in a liquid in a coffee grinder to grind it all up um, I also add in a little bit of potassium sorbate which is a mold inhibitor 
because I run a commercial business, I need to have that little bit of extra protection against mold. So it's a number of spice mix, really works well. Um, basically the salt, I will put all the details in the description. So it's salt and pepper, then some sugar, the coriander, and then a little bit of the potassium sorbate. I'll put it into a container and give it a good shake up. And that is now ready to be put onto our bottle. With the spice, once again, similar to the way we do the vinegar, we put a little bit in the bottom and then we get the steaks out. We layer them in the layer them inside like that. We then sprinkle spices. You, you get to know how much spice to add on each time. By the time you finish, you must finish all the spice. So you, you layer it again like that. Spice. You can see it's actually put on quite a lot there. Right, so we keep going until it's finished. Okay, so I had a little bit left over and I've run out of meat. So mix it by hand a bit. Mix it around, mix it around. Get some more spice. Blow it on. Mix it a bit more. More spice. Right. That's it. Right, then you close it up and into the fridge for the night or a day or two days or three days just depends on on how long you want you you've got to to wait the longer the better two to three days is, is brilliant and then it'll be, be hung up